When you start designing an instrument, you realize that you know nothing. I had great good fortune in having worked with some of the greatest instruments, Greenwich, the Time Museum, and then Harvard, and I look back at those, I look back at pictures and thought, well, how did this person solve this problem? When I went to art school about 1968, I wrote to the author of a new book on John Harrison, Colonel Humphrey Quill, and second or third visit, he said, um, Andrews, um, how would you like to complete a regulator that John Harrison began and never finished? And I thought, wow. And he said, well, no, I'm not asking you to do this on your own. If you're up to the task, I'll apprentice you to George Daniels. And I didn't know who George Daniels was at the time. So I would go to his workshop every Thursday and then take back stuff with me at the weekend to work on. And sometimes I would take the Harrison movement back in a suitcase. Today that would never be done. The concept for the dial that I make, which I call the longitude dial, I saw back in 1979. I ran into this great guy called David Woodward and he shared with me a map made by Franz Ritter based on a sundial projection. And I was captivated by the idea at the time. In 2002, I took this up again. I started to make a drawing of all the geometry and I suddenly realized where all the projection points were. And I discovered that there was a center of projection. You take the Earth and you rotate it around until the point you're making the dial for touches the surface. And then from the center, all the islands, continents, everything else are projected down onto a flat plane. This creates what's called a mnemonic map projection. One of its unique characteristics is that any straight line drawn on this projection is a great circle of the Earth. If you draw a straight line from your home, to London, you'll see you go straight over Newfoundland, and that is the shortest distance between those two places. The dial has a gnomon that casts a shadow, and the bead in the center is the center of the projection. Wherever the shadow falls on the map tells you the time of noon at that point. Wherever it falls on the hour scale tells you your own time to the nearest minute. Because the bead's shadow falls on the dial itself, there are always lines engraved on the dial, one being the Tropic of Cancer. The bead's shadow will follow that in midsummer. The equator is a straight line because it's a great circle of the Earth and it'll follow that. So you can engrave birthdays and wedding anniversaries on the dial that personalize it. When I approached Will and said, you know, how do we do this? He, he said, well, there are moments in your life you may want to underscore my wife and I chose our marriage and the moment when my wife was awarded her PhD. One of the things about this is that it ensures that my wife and I will be in this apartment and no other apartment. <laughs> because there's no way that these readings will be accurate anywhere else but here. If you will simply stand there for even as short a time as two minutes, you will see what looks to be the shadow of the gnomon's wire moving. But of course, it's not the shadow that's moving, it's the planet that one is standing on. So, when I'm here, in a way that is true, with no other place I have on the Earth when I'm walking around, I am aware that I am on a big globe that is turning on an axis. Yes, we need wristwatches, but the dial records and shows and lets one experience much larger rhythms of the planet and so far as I know the universe and it's, it's just beautiful so it's a scientific instrument and also an aesthetic pleasure couldn't be better our society today is based on the science and technology we have and most people are completely unaware of this they don't understand that every electronic device they have is governed by a frequency and that frequency is time measurement. 
We could never do what we do today or live the way we live without scientific instruments. Time is an unfathomable depth of a subject. It just continues going down and down and down and that's what makes it so interesting. There is no limit to it.